Hello everyone, this is a quick tutorial on how to go from absolutely nothing to a functioning button inside a Svelte project using the CRComlib and the CH5 Svelte library. To start with, let's look at a couple things that we've set up beforehand. First, we've created a contract using the Crestron contract editor. We're going to have a single contract named toggle. It's going to have a feedback signal of state and a signal event to the control system named clock. And that is going to be connected in our simple Windows program to a toggle as expected. And we're using a X panel here, X panel 3.0 of IPID3. And also in this example, we will be using VC4 as our control system. So with all that out of the way, let's look at how to create the Svelte project. Now, if you look at the documentation for CH5 Svelte, there is a fairly long getting started section that lists all the steps you need to create the project. And I highly recommend that you kind of follow these to a T because there are a lot of quirks when working with the CRComlib. One of those quirks is we've got to manually copy the CRComlib into the build directory because V will not automatically pick it up. To start, we have this command here, npm create. This is going to create for us a vanilla Svelte project. So we're going to npm create vite latest. My CH5 UI is going to be the name of the project. Change that name to whatever you want. And we're going to use the Svelte TypeScript template. There are two flavors of Svelte, Svelte and Svelte Kit. We're going to use Svelte here because the extra features in Svelte Kit aren't really useful for a UI running on a Crestron touchscreen. However, if you do want to use Svelte Kit, there's some additional documentation in the README of how to get that set up. Now that our project's been created, we need to CD into the project directory. And to do that, we're going to issue the command code my ch 5 ui and this is going to open up a new Visual Studio Code instance inside the folder with everything pointed where it needs to be. And we'll make that a little bigger and open up our terminal. The next thing we need to do is install any npm packages. So we're going to issue the command npm i. And that's going to install all the dependencies for Svelte. And while it's doing that, let's come down to the installation section in the readme. Uh, here we're here we're going to install this library ch5 Svelte along with the Crestron CR com loop. So I'm just going to copy that command out, come back over to VS Code, paste that in, and let that run. Next, we're going to install the Vite plugin static copy as a dev dependency. This is the plugin that's going to copy the CR com lib JS file into our build directory for us. So just paste that into the terminal. Now we need to modify a couple files to configure this behavior. So there is a file called viteconfig.ts in the root of the project, and we need to add this static copy function to it. So we'll need to import the plugin. So I'm going to copy this import, find viteconfig.ts at the very bottom of our file tree here. We'll paste the import in. And then I'm going to grab this config for static copy, which takes the crcomlib.js file and copies it directly into the root of the build directory. So we're going to copy that and expand this plugins array here and paste it just like that. Now we need to load the crcomlib javascript file inside our index.html file. Because the crcomlib doesn't have a default export, we have to load it in this manner. So that means coming over to our index.html file in the root of the project. And just below this title bar in the head, we are going to paste that, which will load the crcomlib. Now, at this point, if you've done everything right and you launch the dev server and you point a browser to localhost 5173, you can pull up the browser's console and you'll see the Crestron component library has started up. So that's great if we just want to run this on a touch panel. 
odds are we probably want to use WebX panel as well. So we'll need to set that up as well as providing the contract file to the project. So let's set up the contract first. We simply need to place the CSE2J file that the contract editor generates into the public slash config directory and rename it contract.cse2j. So coming over here, I'm going to kill this dev server. I'm going to open up our public directory and I'm going to create a new folder called config. And I'm going to pull up our contract file. So this is the output that the contract editor generates. It's going to have a couple folders. We're going to look in the output folder, our project. We're going to look at interface and mapping. And that's where you find the CSETJ file, which we will then copy and paste into our config folder. And we will rename and we'll rename it to contract.csetj. So contract is done. Now let's get WebEx panel working. We need to install another NPM package. That is the CH5 WebEx panel library. So I'm going to copy this command and paste it into my terminal here. And while that goes, I'm going to grab this configuration block. So this is all the configuration that needs to happen for the WebEx panel to start and connect to the control system. I'm going to highlight all of this. And we're going to stick this in our main.ts file. So under src, main.ts, and we're going to paste this entire block right below our last import. This is where you need to put in the information for your control system. So VC4, you'll need a room ID, um, the host name or IP, the IP ID. And if you want to use an authentication token, like in the case for VC4, you'll stick that here. Great. With WebEx panel configured, you should now be able to run the dev server again. Pull up our browser. And we'll see now the component library and the WebEx panel library both start. And if you don't see any further messages, that means that you are connected to the control system and that we were able to load the contract file successfully. Now let's make our first button. I'm going to do this in the app.svelte component. Obviously, as you work with this, you'll create additional components as needed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and delete all the boilerplate code here. And we are going to create a script tag. And we are going to make the language of the script TypeScript. We're going to import a function from the CH5 Spout library called useDigital. Use Digital allows us to subscribe to a pair of digital signals, one for feedback, one for control. So we're going to do const and use digital is going to take two arguments. The first argument is going to be our feedback signal. And the second argument is going to be the signal we set the state on the control system with. We can get these from our contract file. Uh, one way to get it is to open up the CSE2J file. In the CSE2J file are the full signal names listed. You can also open up the HTML components that the contract generator uh, builds for you to get these names as well. Toggle.state is our feedback. So we'll pop that in there and toggle.clock is the state that we're going to set on the control system. So we'll stick that in there. Now we get to build our first button. We're just going to use a standard button element. Now inside the opening tag for the button, we're going to do some CSS. So we're going to add a style tag. We're going to change the background color. Now we're going to use a Svelte expression to change this CSS style tag dynamically with our code. And we're going to use digital signal dot value question mark. 
So if the signal is high, we're going to load this style, which we're just going to make the background color green. And if the signal is low, we are just going to send empty string, which will leave the background color at its default. So that's some easy feedback styling there. Now we need to handle the toggle itself. So we're going to use the on click event handler. And we're going to pass in an anonymous arrow function that invokes the pulse method on the digital signal. Now, if we save, we should be able to come over here. We have this button. It says push it. If we push it, it goes green. Now, this is real feedback from the control system. If I were to stop the program in VC4, this button would no longer react. So that's as easy as it gets to have two-way feedback from the control system. Uh, just to kind of show that it does work, we can actually reuse this digital signal again. Uh, let's just stick a P tag in here. Is So now that we've saved that, we get both the text and the signal. Now that we've got our button working, there's probably one more thing that we want to do, and that is make our project work on a Crestron touchscreen. Now there are some caveats to working with Crestron hardware, as Crestron touchscreens load the web project from the local file system, which can make linking to dependencies uh, problematic in some cases. So if we scroll down the readme, there's an entire section on packing for Crestron touchscreens, and what we're recommending is to use the Vite plugin single file to bundle the entire project up into a single HTML file. So I'm going to copy this package that we need to install. Uh, with your dev server running, go ahead and kill that to get back to a normal console. Install the plugin. And while that runs, We'll need to add the single file plugin to the Vite plugins array. That's going to be in the vite.config.ts file in the root of the project, the very root, not the source folder. This is also where we set up that static copy earlier. And we are going to add the Vite single file plugin. And below our static copy, we are going to add Vite single file, open paren, close paren, and that's it. Now, when we build our project, if we run our build script from our npm scripts tab, we can see that now our dist folder has this one huge HTML file that bundles everything we need inside of it. From there, we can bundle and send the file to our touch panel. Now we're going to use the Crestron CH5 CLI to do this, and I've got a couple pre-baked commands here. So we are going to copy this one. This is going to bundle the project. So this is going to archive. We're going to name it CH5 Svelte. Change that name as you see fit. We're going to read the files in the dist folder. We're going to output to the root. This is the path to the contract file we placed in here earlier. So that's going to bundle it all up. Now you see in our project here, in the root of it, we have ch5.svelte.ch5z. So at this point, you could log into the touch panel's web UI or to um, or send it to a processor through toolbox, and this would work just fine. Crestron also allows us to send directly to the touch panel with the ch5 CLI. And we're going to do that, but we're going to change We're going to send that, enter our credentials, and that sends it to our touch panel. Obviously, all the caveats of working with Crestron touch panels apply. They do some weird things to your CSS, so make sure you're testing on actual Crestron hardware if you can. And as long as you have the proper connection information entered, 
uh, you should be able to operate your button the same way you did in the web UI. Now, if you're just getting started with Svelte, I recommend that you do check out the excellent Svelte tutorial at svelte.dev and then go to tutorial. And it's gonna walk you through step-by-step step a lot of the concepts that is used in the Svelte framework. You'll find that Svelte is amazingly easy to pick up. It is really just basic HTML and CSS with some extra magic sprinkled on top. And with all the heavy lifting done by the CH5 Svelte library to expose all the Crestron signals as runes, Really, as long as you know just basic HTML and CSS, you'll be able to develop a Svelte app pretty easily. Be sure to check that out, svelte.dev, click on tutorial, go through that, it walks you through it, it's pretty fantastic. Thanks for watching, and hope that helps.